This video continues on the parametric and non-parametric lectures that we've been doing so far this semester. Today we're going to look at the non-parametric equivalent of a one-way independent group's ANOVA. Again, keeping in mind the same components from a non-parametric that sometimes we use this if normality is not found amongst our dependent variable, if we have small sample sizes, or a dependent variable doesn't meet that scale level of measurement. So, as we learned in class, ANOVA designs vary based on two aspects, and really a third because of the non-parametric component, but primarily it's the number of independent variables and the type of independent variable. Based on these two aspects, we can make an infinite number of designs. Now, we're going to focus on this first one, which is the number of independent variables here, where we're dealing with one independent variable and that's called a one-way design as we introduced in class. When there's more than one independent variable it's called a factorial ANOVA. Now factorial ANOVA does not have a non-parametric equivalent so we won't be learning about this in this web series. So the web series ones that we will be focusing on however is these one-way designs and today specifically we're going to talk about the independent groups version of a one-way non-parametric ANOVA. The name for that is called a Kreskel wallace The other option, so that's that Kreskel, here's that Kreskel wallace I was talking about, where it's the equivalent to the one-way independent group's ANOVA. In the next lecture, we'll be reviewing the non-parametric equivalent of the repeated measures ANOVA. That one will be called the Freeman ANOVA by ranks. Again, no non-parametric equivalent exists for factorial. So let's go through an example. The researcher wishes to determine if significant differences exist on teams' perception of cohesion and level of comfort with lesbian teammates among NCAA three divisions. Now, this is, this is data pulled from my master's thesis. This is actually two different examples because I've identified two different dependent variables. The first dependent variable was perception of team cohesion right here, and the second one was level of comfort with lesbian teammates. So I have two statistical hypotheses. No significant mean rank differences expected amongst the three divisions on perception of team cohesion, and no significant mean rank differences expected among the three divisions on perception of level of comfort with lesbian teammates. And notice how this differs from a t-test because we have three levels of our IV, division one, division two, and division three. It's also independent groups because you can't be a Division I athlete and a Division II athlete. So SPSS would look like this. First I start off with my data, how many participants from each of the three divisions. You can see in my data set I had a total sample size of 588, 47 were in Division I, 252 in Division II, 289 in Division Three. This is a great one for um, for a non-parametric test because not only is the dependent variable ordinal, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not cohesive and 10 being extremely cohesive, how cohesive your team, that's an ordinal dependent variable. But the fact that we don't have essentially equal ends would also be something that would send us over to the non-parametric side. So first we start with that, then we go down to the descriptive statistics, or excuse me, the test statistic. We start off by looking at the chi-square, that's the actual test statistic here, degrees of freedom, is followed up and then this asymptotic sig is our p-value and if p was greater than 0.05 then we would have a um, or since p is greater than 0.05 we have no significant mean rank difference unfortunately these descriptive statistics table doesn't actually help me out I need to fix this output um, it should be divi divided by division so you could see mean and standard deviation for each division and that would be your report because you can see again mean ranks don't really give us information when the scale is on a scale of 1 to 10 if you're dealing with 280, 291, 299 that doesn't give us much information. Now let's look at this next question. This other dependent variable on a scale of 1 to 10 1 being not at all comfortable with lesbian teammates and 10 being extremely comfortable how comfortable is your team? We have the same breakup in N, a few less participants we can see that now there's bigger mean rank differences. This number is much higher in Division 3 than it is in Division 1. And it turns out that that's statistically significant, where our chi-square is our, our, our test statistic. 
P is less than 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. Unfortunately, again, you can't see the main differences, but I will show you the post hoc that'll show out the differences pretty nicely. Where they, a, P, a post hoc analysis can be run with the cross skull walls to get a pairwise. It looks very different than these Fisher's tests that we've run in the past, but it does compare all the division one to division two, division one to division three, and division two to three, and it gives you this adjusted sig value here to use, and that's the more co or that's the uh, more conservative value. This is the one you would want to use. This adjusted sig value here to find out where the differences exist, and you can see that division one scores are higher than division three, or excuse me, lower than division three, and division two scores are lower than division three. So we can see, and this is the visual, and you can see it's a little counterintuitive, right? Because division three is all the way down here but their score, 322, is higher than both your Division I mean rank and your Division II mean rank. And we know that this is statistically significantly higher than both, but this black line denotes that there is no significant difference between Division I and Division II. So you would take that data and you go and you write the same sort of findings and conclusions we've been working on all semester, um, just like you did in class. So I'm not going to repeat that information again for you. But hopefully you can take this information, go take the um, practice quiz on Moodle, and be prepared to answer question or questions on the test.